Stuff about me, principal consultant at Three Wheel and all my contact stuff. Three Wheel is a gold partner in the Southeast. We do collaborative solutions, migrations, all that kind of stuff. So today, what am I here for? I am to, I'm to. i going to talk about another uh, web part I did, React Pages Hierarchy Solution, and that's the link to where it is in GitHub. So it's already open sourced and available for people to download. Um, immediately got a lot of good feedback from everybody in it. So, so why did I build that thing? Um, a lot of customers I was talking to, you know, now in modern SharePoint, we can create so many pages so quickly and easily that, that we kind of have page sprawl sometimes in sites. And there's always a desire to say, well, you know, I want to link these things together to sort of navigate within my particular site collection. And, you know, I want to want know where I am in this site. So, you know, before writing code, I was like, well, I could use a rich text editor and put hyperlinks in there. I could use a quick links web part and link to pages, uh, but those were a little bit brittle. I could get a little smarter and use highlight content to filter child pages based on some attribute, and that would work okay. But then I didn't have like a where am I breadcrumb up kind of thing. So, you know, I was, I was thinking about that. And obviously, we have Megan Navigation that it, part of its intent is maybe to show a hierarchy sometimes, um, but it's kind of limited to three levels. And some of the customers I was talking to were, um, you know, seven levels of hierarchy. And I was like, really? So, um, so you know, with that, I, and, and I like writing code, I just made an excuse to create this thing. So, um, so I'm just going to switch over to showing it because that's actually what's what's fun. Um, and before I show the code, let me show you what it does. So, so I've got this spaceship Earth site I just did because I'm I'm kind of a geography dork, and um, I thought that's a great way to show a hierarchy. So you know I've got Earth, and then I've got the continents going across the top, and you know, just this big old image that I found somewhere. And so if I went into North America, you know from the home page the hierarchy really starts to show. So, you know, I, I've come from home and I'm on North America and then, hey, what are the, you know, the countries that are in North America? So Canada and uh, United States and so on. So you can kind of, you know, you've got your, how, where am I and how do I get back up from here? And then what's what's beneath me in this hierarchy? So I could go to the United States, kind of drill in there and you see that I've got all the 50 states. Each one of these is an ASPX page that's being filtered by my web part. And so I think the one I actually put stuff in is because I live in Georgia. So, you know, you could drill into Georgia and again, your breadcrumb trail builds out and, you know, I've got my cities in Georgia and I think I live in Columbus. There's probably nothing below this one except for how to get back up from there. So, you know, no children found and stuff like that. So that's, you know, if I go back up to Georgia, um, you can kind of see the the relationship. So so what's, what's in the web part that makes it do that really? Um, really, there's when you put the web part on the page, there's just one decision to make. You know, what am I rendering? Am I rendering the ancestor pages, who's who's myself and above me in this hierarchy, or am I rendering children pages? So this one, if I switch to it, it's rendering children pages. So, you know, who has chosen me as a parent? And th those two relationships drive everything in this web part. And, um, you know, not, not much else to do it. So it should make it simple for an end user to edit. The other thing that I, I did is thinking about responsive. You know, we always think about responsive in terms of a device width. But in SharePoint, you actually have to think about what column it is is it in. So if this web part was in a, a – well, let me click the right place. So I click here. Let's try it one more time. If I make this uh, you know, a two-column or a three-column, I'm still in the wrong, wrong zone. Let's try this one more time. There we go. So there it responded. So if I switch to a three, you see things will stack. So this thing will respond not only to the page width but the particular column you're in and, and start doing wrapping and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely, that was kind of something new to me to, to respond to, you know, the bounding rectangle and not just the page. So, so there's that. And then just to show you in SharePoint a little bit more behind the scenes. So what controls those relationships when you add this web part to the first page. So in, in my Q and a solution, I use the old elements XML style, but this one, I actually wait till you add it to the page. And when you add it to the page, it'll create this column behind the scenes. Um, and so in that case, in this column, I'll actually do a group by because I think that's a good way to show it. So you can kind of see the relationships that people manage. So all they have to do in the page properties of the web part is, you know, say if I'm editing this Albany page, I would pick my parent as Georgia and that would establish the relationships and I would follow Georgia's parent all the way up and stuff like that. So, you know, looking at the home down, you see that North America has picked home as its parent. And then in North America, all these pages have picked it as their parent in Canada and stuff. And so relationship management is pretty easy in that thing to uh, to keep track of stuff. So that 
that was the simple part of it. Not not a lot of list changes and and not a ton of UI stuff. The um, the other thing that I wanted to show you guys. So when I was developing this, I used a pattern, and I'll show the code for this. This might be one of the more interesting things. Is you know this is running on localhost, and I'm going to put two copies of this web part on there just to show you um, kind of what I do. So if I click configure. This debug page ID will only show when you're in debug, debug mode, localhost, or running the workbench off of the page in SharePoint. And so I'm going to put the parent's ID at one just to because I think I have something there for that. Um, and I'm going to pick ancestor pages. So so we see Earth, and then I'm going to put this one at one as well and pick children. So so we kind of you know this is debugging in the workbench. And I even went so far as to utilize a query string just for my testing so I could test this, you know, I'll call it headless without SharePoint. Um, so as I click through this, I'm passing the, the debug page ID that I only use in debug mode as well. And I could sort of test this thing, you know, without SharePoint at all. And I use that using mock data and, uh, and a custom fetch client and stuff like that, that I can mock all this data to make it look like SharePoint still go through the um, Fluent API as part of PNP, but return data locally. So, you know, this is kind of it running on localhost as well, just to show you that it, it uh, works. Um, and so with that, I'll kind of switch over to the code to show you what's kind of interesting there. So I've got my tabs across the top that I, I think are most interesting to show you in this. The uh, the first one, this use page API. So I, I've done React without for state and props without a framework. I've done it with Redux, and Mike Hummel, who works at Three Wheel, did a really good write up on using React uh, hooks and functional components. And I, I really took to his pattern. Um, so this use page API is using React hooks, and it's got some of the flavors of Redux in here. So I've got I've got my actions and my action types and my reducers for updating state based on the particular action. And then I've got um, my use page API that everybody calls as well as my collection of ancestor and child pages. Um, anybody that's done hooks knows how use effect runs. I've got some stuff in here so that it only runs when certain things change. And then of course I've got you know my actual API calls. So this is where I call the site pages list and I get my lookups for the parent page and I build out everything and all that kind of stuff and populate my ancestor and children and then dispatch my actions. And so yeah, I've, all, I've got stuff for checking if a page exists and dispatching that one, determining if the user can manage the site pages. So that tells me whether or not I can actually create that column in the list for the user when they add the web part to the page because somebody could edit a page but maybe not necessarily be able to manage schema and stuff like that. So I deal with that kind of stuff. And so this guy is is a lot like what I've done in Redux in the past for my services and, and making those available. Um, kind of going to the right, the container, it's, uh, you know, one of the things I used to love in Angular is uh, is routing and, and redrawing components and all that kind of stuff. So this, this isn't routing based on URL changes, but it's routing based on web part config changes. So, you know, if I've chosen to show ancestors, then I'm going to render my breadcrumb control. If I've chosen to show children, I'm going to show a list layout control. Um, otherwise, show the thing that says, hey, you need to finish doing some work, you know, configuration. So I've got this thing in here. And part of the reason I did this pattern is because I wanted this to be quasi pluggable, um, where other different layout mechanisms could be used, maybe buttons and sort of the carrot based uh, breadcrumbs are not enough. And so we could have other web part config options and layout options and choose different controls to render. That's really all this guy is good for. And of course, um, getting all my page state. Uh, so looking at one of those, the, actually the the list layout, you know, not, not anything special in here. The main thing to call out is that I do the get bounding rectangle to tell me how big I need to render. Am I in a, you know, a wide or a three column or what and all that stuff. And then the rest of this is just rendering the HTML really that's all there is. Um, I did use the React resize detector that helps me know to, to redraw when people do that stuff. Uh, the breadcrumb layout, which I, I hadn't uh, brought over, pretty much the same thing. It looks very similar to the other one, except for it's got a little more logic around uh, when to show Chevron down and Chevron right based on the width of the zone you're in and all that kind of stuff. So just UI rendering stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm going through that stuff really quick because I only have five more minutes and I want to show you a pattern that I've had for a long time that I started with Angular 
that I use for the local host. So I use the custom fetch client that you basically configure. So I have a base web part in here and I configure the fetch client factory to my custom fetch client. And then in that fetch client, all its job is to figure out if I'm if I'm using SharePoint proper or not. And if I am not, then I'm going to mock response data for the PNP um, Fluent API to use. So I have a mock list factory and I handle the fetch and I uh, manipulate data, right? So my mock list factory here, the only thing that, that's important about this to, to kind of point out is this base list collection right here is where I mock up all of the SharePoint lists and libraries that I want to fake out uh, with arrays. And so, it, you know, I've had projects where I had 10 or 15 related lists with lookups and all that sort of stuff. And so this would be bigger. The rest of this code is pretty boilerplate. It doesn't change. It's just it's managing that list data. And in particular, it's using local storage so that I could actually do updates to list items and it saves and then I could uh, use the updated list items. So that's what mock list factory is for. Um, the other probably this is where my labor of love over you know time has been. So this is where I handle all of those calls and figure out how to cruft it up and make it look like what the API, the, the PNP API would return to me. So most of these are not used by this particular web part because I'm just really working with list items. But getting a user, site users, getting the current web, attached files, relative things, items, context info, doing batch calls um, where you wrap multiple calls in a batch, all that stuff. I've a long time ago coded stuff to deal with that. And so that this is what where all the, the workhorse is. And then as a consumer, what I do is copy this from project to project. And then all I really have to do is um, create an array of items. So this page list is what represents my SharePoint pages. So if you guys kind of remember that local host one, everything is a self-referencing lookup. So I have a lookup field and then I have an ID, a title of the thing. And in this case, I'm using for my debug, my file references that that debug page ID. So that's how I was able to drill through those things. Um, and then my parent page ID. So these are my lookups. And so going this stuff all gets returned through the um, the mock response and the custom fetch client and all that stuff. And so when I use this page API and I make one of these calls like this in here or or really more importantly, this call, my mock data returns it back through here so that the items collection I get here looks exactly like it would in native SharePoint. Um, and that's how I can develop and test without SharePoint at all. So it, it's been really helpful to me. Um, building that out and being able to test without SharePoint and just fire something up and run it on localhost. Workbench is great, and I love how easy it is to run that now with just gulp serve and hanging off a URL, but uh, sometimes you just want to run on localhost too. So um, so I just wanted to show that, and I think the um, only thing else I have to show is uh, my last slide. Just shout outs to everybody, especially Mike Hummel's Heroes, SPF, Rack, React Hooks is where I stole all that stuff for use page API and then all the community stuff. So that's that's my time. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that and certainly can answer questions if there are some, if we have time. Excellent. Thanks, Paul. Really, really, really cool stuff and a, and a great sample. And and, and the, the way you're handling behind of the scenes, the, the mocking and everything, this is really, really great and highly useful for everybody to take advantage. So really great. Yeah, at some point I'd like to turn that into a PNP package or some, I mean a, a node package or something NPM, but uh, yep. just not enough hours in the day. Yeah, it's we need to prioritize our time. I we <laughs> absolutely understand that. So, but really, really cool, uh, really great uh, clarification as well how it's actually being implemented, and the, the whole functionality is also really cool. So, awesome stuff. Cool.